It's the Bud Grant Show. With Minnesota Viking head coach Bud Grant and Channel 5 sports director Bob Bruce. Now, here's Bob. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Bud Grant Show. Uh, we're on at a special time due to the Vikings' appearance last night on Monday Night Football. An exciting game. Unfortunately, the Vikings fell just a little bit short in their bid to beat the Broncos. They lost 19-17. to With us to talk about last night's game, of course, the head coach of the Vikings, Bud Grant, and our special player guest, one of the best running backs of the National Football League, Teddy Brown. Nice to have you with us, Teddy. Nice to be here. Well, I tell you, last night was a great game for anyone who likes to second-guess head coaches and likes to get into strategy of a football game. There were many interesting situations. Uh, first, I think we should give a thank you to Dan Reeves, the coach of Denver, uh, and Dennis Johnson of the Vikings with a score 19-10, and the Broncos on their own 39, 4th and 1. Reeves went for it. Johnson came up with a great play, and the comeback really was on at that point. And I know you don't smile much on the sidelines. But it must have been hard to hold one back when he made the decision to go for it instead of punting because I couldn't imagine him doing that. <clears throat> well, I think you have to look back. And, uh, uh, you know, they went on fourth down down on the goal line when they could have kicked a field goal and they scored a touchdown. Uh, they also uh, threw a play action pass for their second touchdown when they could have settled for a field goal, which would, would have been very important. But they gambled, threw the ball down the middle, uh, great throw and a great catch. And that was a gamble also. Uh, so you forget about all the gambles or the low percentage plays that you may have made and come down to this now and maybe you, uh, it didn't work so we're talking about it. But had it worked, of course, it would have been a, it would have been a great call. They took time out and in, in effect that helped us a little bit too because we organized our defense, went into our gap goal line defense. We put somebody in every gap and uh, you know, gambled a little bit that they weren't going to throw the ball and stormed in there and Dennis made a great play. Let's move along now in those exciting final minutes. So you came back right after that play with a great call that reversed to LeCount. Uh, then you got in for the touchdown, 19-17. Then you had three timeouts, a two-minute warning coming up, and you decided to go with the onside kick instead of the kick away, uh, in which they recovered and you maybe lost about 10, 15, 20 yards. Well, you know, the previous kickoff, we'd, we'd shifted and kicked deep. Uh, we didn't get a real good kick. We didn't get it very deep, but uh, that was the intent of that kick. Uh, the next time, uh, we had two minutes and 40 seconds, I think, uh, we shifted. They did not move. The only thing is, on, the, on an onside kick, you've got to get a bounce. It's a little bit of luck involved. Uh, they got the big bounce. Had the ball bounced in f two yards in front of the, the receiver who received the ball, it would have been a free ball, and I think we had more people there than they did, so our chances of recovering would have been good. It didn't work out. We still had three timeouts. Uh, we did hold them, and we did, uh, uh, we did come back, but that's, uh, it's something we'd set up and we felt good about it, just didn't work. Now let's move a little further along. The final series, first and 10 at the 34, uh, you call three running plays in a row, didn't really get within realistic field goal range for Dan Murray. It would have been a heck of a kick if he'd have hit it from 47 yards, but why the three running plays instead of perhaps maybe three high percentage passes or whatever? Well, time was not a factor at this point. We thought we had plenty of time and, uh, to move down the field, and they were basically in their... Uh, loosened up uh, zone type defense uh, we thought we could run. Uh, we got a good gain and then we had a couple of poor, unfortunate things happen. Uh, uh, Teddy ran in the middle there one time, got good hit, but we thought we were on about the 25 yard line. We got a, we felt a, a poor mark, that we weren't marked to where the ball was. Instead of being third and a yard, we were third and three uh, type thing. Then on the next play, they, we felt they were offside. I don't know what the television showed, that they had jumped offside. We ran the little pitch. There's a lot of options there to run. Uh, their corner came up and made a play. Had he not come, and Teddy might explain how he saw this, but it looked to me like he had 10 yards on the play. So those were plays that we had ready to go. Uh, sometimes uh, your passes set up situations like that. If you remember the Detroit game, Teddy ran down right to the goal line and won against Philadelphia. He got a good run in a similar situation, so that's what we were prepared to do. Teddy, you made the comment, you were quoted as saying that if that guy hadn't a gamble and made the great play, that you could have possibly scored. Well, that's true because um, he, he was there before I, when I got the pitch, and uh, if he hadn't, it came up. The, the only person that could have made the play was a, was a strong safety, and uh, he was way back off the ball. So I think it would have been a big game. We would have been in great field position. You've won so many games in the last few seconds uh, and have been successful. Uh, last night, you weren't. You just couldn't quite pull it off. How did the team react when, it, when the miracle finish didn't come true? Well, everybody was upset because uh, we thought that we was 
we was getting down there close enough. We were moving the ball well, and, uh, and we thought we were going to go in and get close enough for Dan Meyer to kick the field goal. Unfortunately, they came up with the big play and uh, knocked us out of field goal range. Lots of highlights to look at from last night's game, and we'll get to those in just a moment when the Bud Grant Show continues. Obviously, there were many other plays in last night's game that really decided the outcome besides the ones that occurred in the final two minutes. And I think in the first half, Coach, we'll see some of those plays. Well, the first half, there were a lot of defensive highlights. The second half had most of the offensive highlights. Uh, here you see Morton with a play-action pass. This was their big play, a pass down the middle, uh, something they do uh, so very well uh, with Morton. Uh, he stands in there and still has that good live arm. Here with a blitz, uh, he reads the blitz and hits a read coming over the middle, who's generally in on passing downs. and kind of a specialist coming out of the backfield. Uh, they use a lot of shifting, a lot of formations, try to confuse you a little bit. Uh, here Morton goes into the corner of the end zone. You see Tommy Hannon come in and make a fine play there to, uh, to knock the ball away. Uh, <clears throat> they get a field goal on this drive, but they do try to go to the end zone one more time, and they're in the shotgun uh, on this occasion, and they've used this uh, a number of times. And you see they go into the end zone here. Tommy had the ball up in the lights here and just didn't uh, come, came on him so fast that uh, he, as he watched the receivers, uh, that it uh, just didn't get the handle on it. Uh, then they kicked the field goal and you see uh, just inside of the post there. <coughs> and they're ahead three to nothing. Uh, just, you know, as you can just think back, say, well, had the ball not got lost in the lights, maybe, you know, that field goal was the difference. Here's our, uh, coming out of our end, uh, pass to Joe Sensor, you see some of the agility that he has. He had another big night, I think six receptions for 75 yards. <clears throat> Tommy, they had a good pass rush uh, all night, and uh, this uh, was another reception to Joe as he was being uh, wrestled to the ground. He somehow was able to hang on to the ball. And uh, this time to Ahmad over on the sidelines who kind of uh, uh, took his man up the, up the field and came back for the ball. Uh, a lot of coordination required between the quarterback and the receiver in that. Uh, Tommy looks one way, throws the other. Sammy comes up with a, uh, a big reception here. It's a Charlie horse here that bothered him later in the game as he got a helmet right in the, in the thigh, and the other player was uh, stunned momentarily also. They both came back and played, however. <clears throat> it's Tommy out here. Ahmad and we're down inside of their 15-yard line and uh, have a good opportunity here to... Uh, to go ahead and you see Teddy with a, a fine run here. Now we're down inside of the uh, seven yard. We get a penalty, uh, pushed us back, and we were required then to kick a field goal, and that was really the extent of the first half action, and just the two field goals at all that we could come up with. First segment, we talked a lot about the offense and decisions that were made, but uh, let's, let's not slight the defense. What a tremendous game they played, especially the defensive line putting pressure on Morton. I thought, uh, yes, we did play uh, well defensively, and even though they had the better of the uh, yardage in the first half, uh, you know, we kept them to three points. I think that was important. Uh, of course, Willie got an interception and a couple of sacks, and uh, defense played well enough to keep us in the ball game because offensively we didn't do much the first half. 
Well, as we move to the second half highlights, though, the offense uh, finally did get in gear. You had to get down 19-3, to but once you were uh, down, you, you came back. We pick it up with Denver. And uh, they uh, got going, first of all. Uh, they run the little screen out here. Up church to see John Turner make a fine uh, play coming underneath there. And we use a variety of coverages, too, and uh, players in the ball game. Here was a big play for them. You see Reed once again uh, catching the ball out in the flat. Uh, it was kind of a quick count there, and uh, Morton uh, made a good throw. Uh, here he goes down the middle, Igloff, the fine uh, uh, tight end. And uh, from the shotgun, he's back, gets a good deep drop, has plenty of time. Uh, right down the middle, make a good play here. Watch Hannon uh, come in here, knock the ball away, and force them into a field goal situation. Uh, this is a 40 whatever, seven or eight yard field goal, and you see it just hooked inside of the post. And the inches mean a lot in this game. Uh, they come back with another, uh, another fine drive, the best drive of the game here. They come, they actually go the length of the field, and Morton on a play action pass, uh, hangs in there, gets a lot of time. That makes a big difference as he finds Riley Odom, which is about his fourth choice uh, out here in the, uh, in the side. Uh, and if you get the time, Morton's, uh, you know, or any quarterback can make the play. And here's, uh, of course, the big, the big game, a uh, little trap up the middle, and, and uh, they get down to the goal line. And then it's a fourth down here. And you see we have uh, good pressure. You see Jeff come in and get a good hit, but uh, back is able to keep his feet and get in for the touchdown. And had that not been successful, uh, you know, Reeves might have been taking some uh, second guessing there also. We blocked the extra point, and that loomed large as the game went on, as it gave us the opportunity to win with a field goal in the last uh, a few minutes. Tommy goes downfield here. We had a penalty and moved us way back, and it was second and about 20 yards or so. And here's the interception, and they score in two plays uh, after this interception. And many times games revolve around big plays like that. Uh, Morton goes down the middle, and I thought that was a gutsy call because it could have settled for a field goal there and he throws it right over some uh, defenders. Of course, now it's uh, buckle up time and Tommy comes uh, right back, uh, hits Terry LeCount who had another good game for us. You see there's eight minutes to go. We're in our two minute or hurry up offense without the huddle. And, uh, he's audible and at the line. The thing you can't see here, uh, actually uh, Marty McDowell sprains his ankle on that play and had to come out of the game passes Joe Sensor this time to Terry. Uh, you can't hear the crowd noise on, on these films. It's just tremendous. And you can see he's trying to shout, and the players will actually relay the audibles of Joe Sensor to one side and uh, Sammy maybe out to Ahmad here to make sure. I don't know, Teddy, how you could hear that from behind him. I'm sure it was uh, very difficult. Tommy takes a good hit, but a good catch by Ahmad. Uh, puts us down into the 10-yard line uh, area. And then the uh, pass out here to Tony. Uh, catches the ball and you judge it looked like he was over there uh, but uh, with the hurry up offense they can't get the goal line in the on the field uh, can't substitute and we uh, get in for the touchdown now here's the fourth down play watch number 52 Dennis Johnson come in and hold him there they decide on that play after a timeout and here's the reverse you see Terry up the top of your screen uh, some fine blocking here starting with uh, Kramer he'll pitch to Galbraith uh, he will then just run out here in hand. We pull both guards to pull people over. Watch the Tommy can we make a play there. Swilly, uh, Riley, uh, Sammy there. We saw Yeri come across and make a play. A lot of good blocks down to the one yard line. Uh, it's too bad with a fine run that Terry couldn't have scored on that. Uh, but uh, Tony comes right back and with a good block here by Sensor and Teddy, uh, he walks in the end zone. And it was the uh, uh, <coughs> onside kick. Uh, they had the, they got the ball here and they were trying to uh, uh, control it, but they ended up trying to pass the ball. We faked the uh, reverse this time. You see Tony uh, get some blocking there and uh, stays on his feet and fights and gets 10 yards and out of bounds, <coughs> saving time out. Now we've got plenty of time uh, to go down the field. Uh, we we'll go to Joe uh, here, uh, just a fine catch. You see just outside of the reach of the linebackers. Again, uh, getting the ball out of bounds. A little bit of breathing room. And here again, sensor down the middle. They're trying to cover him with a linebacker now. 
And you see Foley, they're fine. Safety come in. Uh, we move down the field uh, within range. I think of Dan just, you know, if he hits the ball just right, it goes. Also, the air there is uh, conducive to getting a few more yards on the kick and uh, uh, just didn't work out. Yeah, I was going to mention maybe the altitude would help him out, but 47 yarder is a long one. You got to hit it perfect. And uh, we beat uh, Denver here a couple years ago, and Denver kicked a 47 yard field goal in overtime. So it's you know not unusual. On a Monday watched, night game. And before uh, before the uh, while we were working out, he was hitting him from 50. So it wasn't it wouldn't have been uh, you know that uh, outstanding. I think he could have made it. So Denver wins at 19 to 17. The Vikings, their second loss in a row, sets up a very crucial situation for next Sunday. We'll look at that situation and a question from our Bud Grant hotline right after this. Well, in other words, we're just going to go right into, after you finish answering the question and I give the number, we're going to go right into this video all the way through. Uh, why don't you run the uh, two-minute offense for the entire game? Yeah, that must have been... Well, before we go on to look at next week's game, we've got a question for the Bud Grant hotline. And, uh, Bud, it comes to us from Lenny Siegel of Golden Valley. He wants to know, uh, you went to the two-minute drill with eight minutes left in the game. It worked so effectively for those final eight minutes. Why don't the Vikings sometimes use the hurry-up offense for the entire game? Well, I think you could liken it to say if you can run 100 yards in 9.5, why don't you do that for a whole mile? You could set a world's record. <laughs> Well, you just can't do it. I mean, it would be physically impossible to run it at that level. Uh, remember, that there was eight minutes to go when we went into it, but, you know, we scored in two plays on Terry LeCount's reverse, and they had the ball much of that time, so we didn't run it for a whole eight minutes. We'd run it for periods of that time. It would be very difficult to run it the whole ball game and, and maintain the same uh, intensity just through the fact that, you know, you're, you're constantly moving and you can't do it. Uh, the whole game physically is more than anything else. Well, Lenny, I want to thank you for your question. And don't forget that one hour following this Sunday's game with Tampa Bay, the Bud Grant hotline will be open, 6429375, open for your questions. Now, here's a quick look at the divisional race. A big game next week. Minnesota and Tampa Bay, 5-4, and four, both tied for first place in the Central Division. And, Coach, let's look at Tampa Bay. Of course, you've lost to them once in the first game of the season. Have they changed much since that time? A little bit. They're a big play offense now. You see Williams here. This is what they've been most successful with this year. This is what's kept them in. There's a, a Giles, their fine tight end that will rival Joe Sensor in terms of ability and dependability. And uh, here's Eckwood done a play against us where he uh, runs the ball. But uh, basically their running game has not been as strong as their passing game. And of course, here's what Williams does better than anybody in football. Uh, this takes the ball and runs through people. He's a big, strong quarterback, so in order, in, as well as passing, he can run and beat you. Just over halfway of the season, and now every game the rest of the year is crucial. I think that's the way somebody planned it. I don't know, <laughs> but it looks like that's when it's going to be right down to the end. The just entire like league just about is like that. Uh, just like it has been for the last three years. In just a moment, we'll be back with our special player guest, Ted Brown, right after this.
Our player guest today, of course, as you already know, is Ted Brown, who really has blossomed into one of the finest running backs of the National Football League. He is having a tremendous year in pass receiving. He leads, I believe, the NFL now. He leads the team, 52 catches, 505 yards. In rushing, Teddy, you've got 635 yards. You put those two stats together, and it appears to me that you're a very uh, important part of that Minnesota Viking offense. Well, uh, I just try to do the best that I possibly can do and uh, do whatever they want me to do. And if it's catching passes, running, or whatever, and I just try to go out and play each game and play as hard as I can. Teddy, everybody now is singing the praises of Ted Brown. What a great running back you are and that you're doing just such a tremendous job. But I can remember when you first came to the Vikings that a lot of people expected, expected a lot from you. And when you really didn't produce a tremendous season that first year, a lot of people got down on you. Then you had some injury problems. Uh, but evidently you've been able to put all that behind you and uh, rehabilitate that knee and get to the point that you are at today. Well, it's, uh, it's really amazing what two years of experience can do to a ball player. Uh, and it certainly helped me. And, and I did have some problems with my knee early in my career, but uh, I, that seemed to solve them in there. And my knee is okay and I'm feeling fine and I just hope to continue success. When you mention experience, I mean, what, what is the difference between that first year and now? Just the fact that you pick up the defenses faster or just see the holes quicker or what? Well, learning the defense is a, big, is a big problem when you first come in because they have so many and it usually changed from, you know, from down to down. And, and that was really kind of bothering me in the beginning. But now I, I recognize defense a lot better and, and it just makes me a better ball player. Some of the fans have been asking me uh, uh, if the offense is so powerful in the final minutes of most of the games, why can't they do that for the entire game? Which is easier said than done. <laughs> well, yes, it is. I guess uh, during the end of the game, everybody knows what we got to do. We really got to do it, and we got to give a little extra, I guess. And it just, we just try to reach down and get a little bit more in intensity. Uh, just uh, to carry us over. I think we play harder a little bit at the end of the game because we exert ourselves to, to a point to where we don't have anything else left. You think with such crucial games coming up uh, the rest of the year that the team is going to have to come up with two good solid halves more often if they're going to be successful and advance on to the playoffs? Yes, we're really going to have to do that. I mean, we've got to have got to uh, get some kind of ball control. If we can get ball control, then we sustain drives and, and then we'll play a lot better. But uh, we just can't go with three downs and, and then out. We just got to take control of the game early and, and then end up like we do at the, the end of the game. You've carried the majority of the load as far as uh, the running game for the Minnesota Vikings, but last night the emergence of a, another guy, Tony Galbraith, and it appears that he's going to be able to maybe take a little of the pressure off of you and open things up for you a little. Well, Tony is a very good back, as he proved on Monday night. And uh, he's playing well at this point in time, and I'm glad that he is because it, it takes a little pressure off me and lets me know that I can come out and Tony can go in and do the job. We got a, a back in guy that can come in at any point in time in the game and fulfill the bill as well as if I was doing it. You've lost uh, two games in a row now. Uh, when that situation comes up, the third game really becomes very critical because a losing streak is very easy to start but very hard to stop. Uh, and, and to make matters worse, it's a very crucial game as far as the Central Division is concerned. Well, every game we play from here on in is crucial. Uh, all the players on our team come from winning traditions, and nobody on the team likes to, to lose. So I know everybody's going to reach down and get a little something extra to, uh, to help us win. And I know, I, me, myself, I don't, like, I don't like losing. And I'm going to try to do as much as I can, you know, not trying to be a one-man show, but to... Uh, to play as a team and, uh, and hope that uh, you know, everything turned out all right. And I'm sure most of the players still remember that disappointing uh, last second loss in Tampa, the first game of the year. Yeah, er, er, everybody remember it, but uh, we just can't let that happen to us. Uh, we had our chances to win in Tampa, and uh, we had our chance to win Monday night. We just got to take advantage of it this time. I know Teddy was telling me as he came in, he's a little sore, he's a little tired because he got home late last night, had to go to meetings this morning. Any serious injuries? Uh, <clears throat> Marty McDowell sprained his ankle. He might be a question mark. Uh, Sammy's got a Charlie horse. Other than that, I think we're in pretty good shape, and I think that's important going into the last half of the schedule. Our, our injury situation is good, and uh, that may be our strong point going in. So it's the Vikings versus Tampa Bay next Sunday at the Met. Don't forget, we'll be with you 1030 Sunday night with the Bud Grant Show. Until then, for Ted Brown, Coach Bud Grant, this is Bob Bruce saying good night.
This has been the Bud Grant Show with Minnesota Viking head coach Bud Grant and Channel 5 sports director Bob Bruce. This program is a pre-recorded presentation of KSTP Television Sports.